What's up traders? Risk management is always a topic that most people try to avoid, I would say. They don't want to confront risk management. They think that there's an answer to trading that can be found on the charts that has nothing to do with how much position size and how you grade your trades. I have to be the bearer of bad news and let you know that risk management is actually the biggest and most important piece of your trading plan. So today we're going to break down GBP USD. This was the third trade I took this week. It was my third winner of the week. And here the trade didn't move for me, but risk management still kept me profitable and still offered decent trade opportunities today. So I'm going to first show you the PL and then we're going to flip over to trading view. And I'm actually going to show you how the end, this thing ended up moving lower into today, which is now Friday. So we were right on our direction, just a little bit early on our time timing, which we often find, but still there's money to be made. So we got to go over it. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Austin Silver. I appreciate you being here very much. If you find value in today's recap, just do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button down below. That helps me spread my videos and spread this value to other traders in the community. And also make sure you subscribe. That way you don't miss any future recaps just like this one. I'm also doing a lot of these like podcast conversations recently. So I want to keep you guys updated on all that stuff as we're going forward. Now, coming soon, Riley and I are going to be moving down to Florida and we have a couple of new projects in the works. So with all of these changes, you really want to make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the updates. Now, if we take a look at the PL, you're going to see there's basically, not basically, there is two different times that I was trading GBP USD. Both times I had two separate entries. So what that means is I saw an entry signal present, but because I wasn't 100% confident in the signal, I didn't put all my risk on that first position. So let's say, for example, I wanted to risk 1%, I would only put half a percent risk on the first position. And once I got more confirmations that it was moving in the direction I wanted it to, then I would go in and put the rest of that risk, the other half a percent on. I hope that that makes sense. So it's the same signal. I'm just dividing my risk, mitigating my risk by splitting it into two and waiting for a confirmation before adding in and getting into the full size that the trade should be. Now, keep in mind what goes into the determining factor of that size is the grade of the trade, the quality of the trade. And with a system like ours, you're able to read the qualities of the trade. You could call them the characteristics of the trade. And that determines if it's an A setup, if it's a B setup, or if it's a C setup. And then, the, of course, the higher quality trades, those A and B setups, they're going to get more size than the C setups. So today on GU, because of a few factors we're going to go over here in a second, I graded it a C. And that was the reason that I traded it very small. So now with that small size overall, splitting the risk between two positions, neither of those positions alone is going to make good money, but together you're going to get that full reward versus that full risk. Now, I hope that that makes sense. I wanted to first lay the foundation, I guess you could say, to explain how I grade these setups and why you see multiple open prices. Now, the reason there's so many closed prices with that same entry price, you can see here at 1.2224, and 1.2234, you see right here, the reason the risk is split there, but there's so many closes is because as this trade wasn't developing, I started to piece myself out as it was in profit to again, mitigate the risk. Because if it's not moving for me, there's no reason that I wanna stay married to it and stay stuck in that trade. I wanna take the profit if I can and get out. Sometimes I end up closing like this and it's negative and it's a small loss, but even there, I'd rather take the small loss than getting stopped out at full stop just because I was married to the trade idea. So that should explain to you now. And if you don't understand, just drop a comment down below. I know I talk fast, but I'm hoping this you know explains it to you that you see the two entry prices for the first position. Now, a few hours later, I actually got another entry signal here at 1.2225. And I ended up adding into that position here at 1.2222, a lot of twos, right? That was the second position again with the risk split between two entry prices and again closed in multiple pieces. That's why there's three closes here. Now together, it ended up being over a 1% day, over a 1% gain today between both of it. If I had not gotten back into the trade here with that second position a little bit later, it would have been a very small win today. Basically a wash is what I would call it just because it didn't move for me. So now that we went over the PL, now you understand how I broke down the trade and, and graded the trade and split my risk and managed these exits. Let me show you what I liked on the chart. So going into the morning, this is what the setup was on the 15 minute. You can see I have the Asia high marked off at the changeover of day. We dropped overnight and set a divergent bottom, a bullish divergent bottom, which sets a support zone, a sensitivity zone for us down here at 1.2 two, one, nine, right? That zone, if we get a short signal would be our take profit area one. 
The reason I'm short biased is because yesterday we were basically sideways. The day before, however, we set our RSI high and actually started to move lower. We couldn't really make new highs and higher lows off the 800 EMA. So last night when we broke back down underneath it and we started to make lower highs and lower lows, you start to fall in line with that short bias. So coming into the day, the TDI confirms that the price action structure confirms that you're not making, um, you're not moving in an upward trend. So the short bias definitely makes sense. And now coming off the Asia high, you know that there's EMAs in your way, the white 200 EMA and the blue 50 EMA, you know that they are in the way. However, you could still be short biased in that overall trend. So as the morning developed, I was able to go down to the one minute and find, let me turn that off like this. I was able to go down to the one minute and find multiple entries here, like you saw. A few times in here, we dropped into profit, but it came back up and retested the zone. Dropped into profit, came back up and retested the zone. Then that second entry that was a little bit later actually came here, again, out of the zone, but it didn't hold and it came back up and stopped me out in profit. So all day I was watching it reject the zone, but not break, reject the zone and not break over and over and over again. So it proved to me that it couldn't move. So I think managing it the way that I did where I was closing it in pieces and making sure that I wasn't married to the idea that it had to drop today, the day being Thursday, that was the better way to handle this because I've seen this multiple times. Look, we were not wrong on the direction. You can see it moved lower overnight and even now today, way lower than where I thought it was gonna go, right? Very rarely are we wrong on the direction. I think structure in the Forex market with these indicators is very easy to read once you understand how to read them. But the timing is what really screws people up because you could have been jabbing this short and blown your entire account yesterday and then seen it move lower today and you'd feel like an idiot. For me, I'd rather just mitigate the risk and if it's not moving, let me see if I was, whatever I can get out of this, I'll take small loss, small win, whatever it is, and I'll move on to the next one good trade. And I'll come back tomorrow. I'll come back Monday, Tuesday, whenever it is to just find a better trade that moves for me. Find something with better EMAs. Find something with no divergence on the bottom. You could say that this divergence on the bottom is the reason that it didn't work out. If you know our D2 system, you know that the break of the 50 here could signal a rise to the 800 EMA. So with that, you can see the chop as the L50 rises into reset, price action doesn't move, and that kind of confirms the idea of reset. So I think there's multiple ways to look at this and say, hey, to get out of it with the profit that I did was pretty good considering it didn't move at all. And I hope that from this video, you guys are learning and seeing, that, number one, you don't wanna be married to any trade. If it's not moving, get out. Small loss, small win, whatever it is, get out if it's not moving. We need things to move. And number two, you should see that I try to trade, and it's never perfect, but I try to trade with no ego. I try to really focus on what the candles are telling me. I try not to worry if I'm right or wrong. I just wanna make money. I don't care who's calling the trade, whose idea it is, I don't care. I just want high probability trades. And if a low probability C setup like this isn't moving for me, then I wanna be aware of that and be able to move off of it, take the small win, take the small loss, whatever it is, and just come back and find the next one good trade behind the edge. That's the way to look at it. Now, just to give you guys a quick update on Bitcoin, since I know a lot of people have questions on that every day, you can see, we took a beating yesterday. Overall, we dropped about 8% all those. Now we're rebounding a little bit here, but if we take a look at the daily chart, since you know that's what I'm focused on the most, this is a retest of the 21 EMA. And I think we need to be very vigilant here because if we break and hold under the 21 EMA, you could see this drop down to 8494, maybe even down to 8200, maybe even down to 8000. So we definitely wanna pay attention here to see if we can get back above the 21 EMA, just like we did last time here, or are we in for a harder pullback down towards this 8000 region? So we're gonna take it day by day. We'll see where we finish the day here today, Friday the 22nd, and then we'll go from there. But over the weekend and into the holiday weekend, I should say, I'm gonna be paying attention to this to see what it does. I still think there's bullish potential in it, but you definitely have to read the chart. You don't want you don't want to ignore technical breakdowns. So that covers the GBP USD trade. I hope that that was insightful. I hope it was educational, and I hope that you were able to take something from this and use it in your trading going forward. Whether you're watching this the day it's posted or you're watching this a year later, doesn't matter. I'm hoping that here you can see number one. It's always a process that I'm focused on, and it's really become an egoless process, and that has helped me 
cut the trades that aren't moving, get out of slow trades, and stay in winning trades longer. So again, separating yourself from the trading, just know that I'm Austin and I trade, not I am my trading, that helps. So try to detach, try to focus on the bigger picture, focus on the long term, and realize that this small little loss, getting out of a trade that doesn't move for you, or the small little win, getting out of this trade that doesn't move for you. Either way, that's a much better choice than marrying a trade that isn't moving and staying in and getting stopped at full size at the stop out. That just doesn't make any sense. You can tell when they're not moving. You should be able to know when a trade is good and when a trade is not good. So you should be able to make that decision behind your system. Whether you're with us or not, your system should be able to tell you that. And if it can't, talk to me and let me help you figure that out. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys always. If you want to check out the website where I got this canvas, I will put the link down in the description as well. You can get 15% off any of your purchases there. I love them. They're sick. It brightens up all the pictures. I want to like make sure it's in every shot now. So check it out. Any questions, hit the comments and I'll see you guys in the next trade.